In our national league, the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, UNC, taking action this week to address what the chancellor is calling a mental health crisis on campus. Classes were canceled Tuesday. Students were encouraged to rest and focus on their mental health. The Wellness Day comes after two student deaths by suicide this semester. CNN's Amber Walker joins us now live. Amber, what led to the, this decision by the university? Well, Jake, the chancellor at UNC Chapel Hill referred to two student suicides that happened just this past month in his announcement, including one reported suicide that happened on Saturday in the morning on campus at the Hinton James Residence Hall. This is according to UNC police crime logs. Also, there was an attempted suicide reported on Sunday at three in the morning. This also happening on campus at the Granville Towers South, again, according to the school's crime logs. Both incidents are under investigation, but this is prompting and did prompt the UNC student body to call on the university to cancel classes on Monday and Tuesday to give students time to grieve, to seek out mental health resources amid what they called an already stressful semester. So then on Sunday, in a message that was posted online, Chancellor Kevin Guk Guskowitz announced that he had met with students and faculty decided to cancel classes on Tuesday, declaring it a wellness day, as you mentioned. He said, in quote, we are in the middle of a mental health crisis, both on our campus and across our nation, and we are aware that college-aged students carry an increased risk of suicide. This crisis has directly impacted members of our community, especially with the passing of two students on campus in the past month. As chancellor, a professor, and a parent, my heart breaks for all those whose suffering goes unnoticed. Now, the other suicide the chancellor refers to happened on September 4th, according to UNC police crime logs. Now, some students welcomed this wellness day, while others acknowledge that this really has been a tough time for some students. I think it's good that they're recognizing that some, like something's going on if there have been two suicides in two days. I've just had so many conversations with people that I'm not even that close with and it's just come up that like they're like yeah like I've just you know it was a phase like it was something that I had to go through. And the university announced that there will be counseling services made available this week and also plans for a mental health summit later in the month. Jake. All right, Emma Walker, thanks so much. Joining me to discuss further, Dr. Samantha meltzer Brody. She's the chairwoman of the psychiatry department at the UNC School of Medicine. She's been helping to run community support centers on campus this week. Uh, Dr. meltzer Brody, th thanks for joining us. You've been at UNC Chapel Hill for a long time. Have the mental health concerns ever been this intense? Well, thank you, Jake. I, I'm a uh just struck by the mental health crisis we're facing as a society. So as the chair of psychiatry and working in the healthcare system, we serve the state of North Carolina and mental health for the entire society is really, really difficult right now. And the university represents a microcosm. We know that rates of depression, anxiety, and rates of suicide in young people, in college age people is at an all time high. And this is a national crisis. And what we're seeing at UNC is representing a microcosm of the mental health crisis we're facing as a society. When you talk to students, what are they telling you that they think is behind this? Is, is this a lot? Uh, is, a, is a great deal of this related to uh, the pandemic and stress from the pandemic? Yeah, I think for all of our young people, the stress of the pandemic and the fallout of the pandemic has been enormously difficult. The social isolation, the disconnection, people everywhere are feeling exhausted. People's resilience is down. And so I think that we really have, in many ways, a traumatized population. And we're seeing this nationally. We're seeing this in all of our kids, high school kids, college kids, college age kids, whether they're in university or not. And I think we need a large scale national public health response to this and universities are now going to have to respond in ways that's very different than what they were asked to do before. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of stories that we have in our show today that are all kind of related. Um, we're going to be talking about the opioid crisis later in the show. We talked about air raids just before this. Now we're talking about student, student suicide. Uh, they're all kind of related, having to do with mental health. Stu suicide, of course, is the second leading cause of death for Americans aged 10 to 34. Uh, there are two and a half times as many suicides as homicides in the U.S., according to pre-pandemic CDC data. Why do you think that is? 
Well, the pandemic has stressed us in ways that are unseen in any of our lifetimes. And mental health has always been undervalued and underfunded and under-resourced as a society in this country. The mental health resources for kids and adolescents have been particularly bad for a very long time everywhere. And so this is a societal issue and everything with the pandemic has really made us see the cracks in our systems and in our society. And so I really feel as we think about my job in responding to taking care of people in North Carolina and now partnering with our colleagues on the main campus, how do we make this a priority and how do we say we have got to do something different, that where we are in 2021 is not where we were in 2019 some, and there need to be new, new approaches. Some students wrote messages of grief uh, or encouragement outside the student union. These are, these are pictures from, from Twitter that we're showing right now. How are these losses hitting the student body? Well, the student body is deeply impacted, as you can imagine. It's heartbreaking. And as someone who has two college-age students myself, this is something that just, you know, hits so close to home and is every parent's worst fear. What's been really amazing is seeing how the community has come together. And I have been so inspired by the broad outreach across campus, how we're putting together this community response with psychiatry, psychology, social work, broadly bringing in mental health professionals to help work with our colleagues on campus. The students are doing a brilliant job with their peer program, supporting each other, reaching out in ways um, big and small, but there really is a sense of, of coming together and also an appreciation of the societal mental health crisis that's now hitting campus and not just this campus, but all campuses, that there has to be a new path forward. And that's what we're hoping that will happen out of the summit that comes is really innovative and novel approaches to addressing this mental health crisis that we're all facing. UNC is such a special place. It's good to hear that people are banding together. What, what is your message to, to any students out there who might be having suicidal thoughts or, or, or other critical mental health issues right now? Well, the primary message is you're not alone and there is help to get and reaching out that there is hope. And I think people can feel isolated and feel they don't see hope. They don't see a path forward. Reach out to a friend or a family member to a suicide hotline that there is hope and that we care about you and things can get better. We appreciate that for so many of our young people, they're not able to see a path forward, but we have to connect with each other and they need to reach out for help. And there are people that deeply want to help. There is help. There is love for those who are who are in a tough spot right now. Dr. Samantha Meltzer, Brody, thank you so much. If you or someone you thank know you, needs that help, please take the moment to call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. That's 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. Or you can text the word HOME to 741741.